Well, we are online. Welcome, uh, welcome everybody, and thanks for joining us. We are we are in Trieste for ESOF 2020, the Euroscience Open Forum, and uh, it's a pleasure to stay here today with you and with our remote and on-site speakers. Good morning. We we are happy that you decided to attend this panel promoted by Regione Friuli Venezia Giulia. I think that Trieste, as a city of science, is a special place, it's the ideal place to host this panel. I'm just here to present the speakers, but I want to underline the importance of lifelong learning as a strategic factor, as an asset for the economic and social growth of a region, of a state, of a community, because the lifelong learning is a key condition for progress, innovation, public engagement, and economic development. So, as you know, we are going to talk about the Learning City project promoted by UNESCO, a big project that involves a network of over than 50 countries in the world. We are going to speak about the model set up by UNESCO, but also to explore the Israeli experience an experience from Australia and the project of the municipality of Trieste, which in July 2020 has applied for becoming a learning city and is now awaiting for the response from UNESCO. So let's start this panel with a message by Massimiliano Fedriga, president of the region. Uh, he's sorry, but to do, but to do to institutional commitment is not here with us. So please show the Fedriga video. Thanks. Permettetemi prima di tutto di cogliere l'occasione per porgere i miei ringraziamenti a tutti i soggetti coinvolti in questo progetto. In particolare ringrazio l'organizzazione di ESOF, il sindaco di Modin e presidente eh, Unione delle Municipalità Israeliane, Ain Bibas e Orna Mager, direttore del Centro Multidisciplinare di Modin, un'eccellenza per la formazione degli adulti e incubatore del modello di Learning City. Non è un caso che la partnership della nostra regione con Israele si consolidi attorno al modello della Learning City, una comunità che apprende in una società a cambiamento esponenziale. Questo progetto dimostra che solo grazie a una vera e propria alleanza fra regioni, paesi e realtà diverse possiamo dare risposte efficaci alle nostre comunità. Trovare soluzioni congiunte in linea con le esigenze di un mondo in continua evoluzione rappresenta la sfida più innovativa che siamo chiamati ad affrontare, in particolare in tempi difficili come questi. Questa best practice di progetto sulle Learning Cities dimostra anche che l'investimento del capitale umano è un prerequisito fondamentale per aumentare l'innovazione del sistema produttivo del Friuli Venezia Giulia e per connetterlo al mondo dell'innovazione e della ricerca internazionale creando un ecosistema strutturato in grado di rispondere prontamente alle sfide poste dalla globalizzazione. Un sistema regionale che è ancorato alle sue radici, ma che è in grado di aprirsi al mondo in maniera vincente. Rafforzare le relazioni internazionali, rinsaldare i legami con le aree storicamente e culturalmente affini, Investire nel capitale umano e nella formazione permanente sono dunque elementi essenziali per l'economia del nostro territorio, specialmente in questo difficile momento di pandemia internazionale che sta avendo un duro impatto su imprese e occupazione. I cittadini devono essere messi in condizioni di cogliere le nuove esigenze del mercato del lavoro e quindi essere formati in maniera adeguata in una logica di lifelong learning, dando vita a una comunità regionale che apprende. La dimensione della collaborazione internazionale si intreccia quindi con le partnership locali che uniscono i comuni, le municipalità, i centri di formazione, le università, i centri di ricerca e le imprese, la cui collaborazione fattiva è imprescindibile per lo sviluppo di una società prospera fondata sulla conoscenza, una società che garantisca ai singoli il potenziamento delle proprie capacità e assicuri un lavoro di qualità e la partecipazione attiva nella società anche ai cittadini più fragili e a rischio esclusione. 
Lo sviluppo sostenibile delle collettività locali, la solidarietà internazionale e lo sviluppo di modelli di learning city e learning regions hanno quindi come prerequisito fondamentale il sostegno all'istituzione e all'apprendimento permanente, il sostegno alla famiglia come nucleo fondante di una comunità e il sostegno allo sviluppo tecnologico del territorio. Concludo con un ringraziamento doveroso e sentito a tutti i partecipanti di oggi. I partner israeliani, UNESCO, Pascal, Comune di Trieste e Città di Widom. Ed esprimendo l'augurio sincero e convinto che il legame internazionale tra queste realtà si possa ulteriormente rafforzare. L'obiettivo è che il seme dei valori fondanti descritti oggi possa germogliare e prosperare per dare vita a un progetto ad ampio respiro di comunità che apprende. Ci attendono sfide molto impegnative sia sotto il profilo dell'innovazione tecnologica che di quella sociale. I principi della Learning Cities possono costituire una base solida e preziosa per rafforzare il nostro modello sociale e rimettere la famiglia e i valori al centro della nostra società. So thanks to Massimiliano Federiga and uh, as Federiga said, connecting people, creating bridge between different communities, funding innovation and research, promoting international collaboration, all these things are essential for the life on a knowledge-based community and society. I mean, so uh, sharing international learning cities experiences will facilitate the building of a knowledge-based community also in this time of crisis linked to coronavirus. Well, now I'm, uh, I'm very happy that we have with us today the coordination team of the UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities, Costantinos Pagratis. Welcome, good morning. Well, morning and good evening. Well, Thank you very much. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Uh, well, you could, you explain, uh, could you explain the, um, the UNESCO model and introduce the audience to the strategy of the UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities and explain, first of all, what is a learning city and what is the UNESCO Global Network of Learning City? Please. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, first of all, for the invitation on behalf of the coordination uh, team of UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities, dear President, dear um, panel, dear experts and distinguished guests of this meeting, I would like to congratulate you for the coordination of the Euroscience Open Forum, which already started last week and today uh, it's, the, um, it's the last day of the, of the forum, so I'm very pleased to present uh, here in this initiative of the Municipality of Trieste. And the objective of the presentation uh, today will be to uh, present the strategy of UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities, um, which the recent strategy of UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities we started on, uh, on during the last uh, international conference on learning cities, in, uh, which took place in the city of Medellin in Colombia in October 2019. So, um, this strategy of the network, um, of course, the network counts uh, many years ago, not so many years. It started in 2013, is an initiative by UNESCO uh, Institute for Lifelong Learning, which is based in Hamburg. So I'm here to present the new strategy now, which is uh, for the next two years. The, at this point, I would like to mention that the um, global network of learning cities at the moment has around 174 cities from more than 50 countries around the world. So we have cities from Latin America and the Caribbean, we have a lot of cities from Asia and Pacific region, many cities from Arab states, Africa, but also Europe and North America. Um, of course, as you rightly mentioned, Madam Chair, in the beginning, uh, in your introduction, uh, at the moment, um, we are reviewing the applications that we have received from, uh, for the membership application period for 2020. And on the last week of September, uh, we will be able to share with you um, and with the rest of the world and the rest of the applicant cities the outcomes of the applications. Um, more uh, specific, the outcomes will be uh, published on the 23rd of September 2020. I think it's Wednesday. So we're expecting the network to grow. 
Um, I mentioned we have at the moment 174 cities and we're expecting the, the network to grow significantly and we're, great, and we're very grateful for the applications that we have received, including the application of Trieste, of the municipality of Trieste. And um, uh, we're very happy to see that despite the fact that um, this year, this winter has been uh, quite difficult for the cities and for the all for all the world, the cities have been have expressed their interest into becoming members of the network, and we're very pleased and grateful for this um, application period, so to say. So let me start. I would like to um, mention that at the moment uh, we have uh, distributed the work of the global network of learning cities into seven thematic areas of work. The first uh, thematic cluster, so to say, we call them clusters, is education for sustainable education for sustainable development. Then we have educational planning. Uh, we have the cluster on entrepreneurship, cluster on equity and inclusion global citizenship education. Finally, the cluster on literacy and the cluster for learning for health and well-being. You can imagine how um, the work has already started to um, take place since last year, as I mentioned, since the meeting we had in Colombia, the fourth international conference on learning cities, and each city now is a member of its cluster. So based on their own interest, the cities have started to work together with us and with the kind support of a technical partners that we have, such as um, um, specified, uh, spe specialized, sorry, Institute of UNESCO, but also other organizations into the, uh, into the, into the, into the realization of this, of this work plan. So these are the seven thematic areas of work. So what is, what is the expected outcome? What the result would be um, after this work? We are planning to our intention is to document good practices and our intention is to share experiences. Uh, next, of course, to the development of tools, which will lead into capacity building for cities and uh, education experts within the cities, and, uh, but also this will um, contribute to policy making with lifelong learning and evaluation of education programs within the cities. Just to uh, mention this really quick, I hope I have time uh, before I move to my next slide. Um, before we had the fourth international conference on learning cities in Colombia last year, uh, there were a lot of cities uh, expressing their interest to um, meet the representatives of other cities. I can give you an example. One city from Korea, before going to Colombia, they asked us, we would like to visit uh, a city in uh, Brazil. Uh, Sao Paulo, the capital of Brazil, is also a member of the network. So uh, due to the fact that these two cities had common interest, common um, ground in, term, in the field of education and lifelong learning, this trip brought them together. And this trip had the chance to introduce each other and to learn from each other. I like this example a lot because this is something that cities do not have the chance to do it very often. Cities do not have the chance to meet other representatives very often, particularly when it's very when they're when they're very far from each other, and to learn from each other. So this is what the network is about: to document, to share experiences, and to learn from each other, uh, but also to develop together tools. Um, I would like to introduce you also to some milestones for the thematic clusters, which is, as mentioned, the work is ongoing. Um, in October 2020, we'll have um, um, the first online uh, meeting for the cluster on health and well-being. Uh, maybe to mention that this cluster is coordinated at the moment by two cities. Uh, we have the city of Cork from Ireland, but also the city from um, Osan 
in the Republic of Korea, in South Korea. So uh, this cities has all this cluster, I'm sorry, has also 34 member cities. So uh, you can imagine due to also to the crisis that has been um, created by the pandemic, the interest of the cities into the field of learning for health and well-being, but also into the field of of, um, of mental health. What is the consequences of this? And we're very happy to move on, in particular with this cluster, but also with the rest, of course. Um, but you will see in the next slide what I mean about, um, 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 in particular for this cluster. Um, of course, in November, we have the, also another cluster uh, meeting. Uh, on This one, this time, will be on global citizenship. Education. This is coordinated by the city of Larissa in Greece, but also um, the city, um, one city from uh, Korea, also. And these are the two uh, meetings that we're currently uh, working on. This slide um, here is about to introduce you to the work of UNESCO that we started already um, from the 17th of March 2020. And this work is um, related to the webinars that we organized during this period uh, from March until June 2020. Uh, there, uh, the webinars um, offered a platform to the cities to present uh, their response to COVID-19. So this, this has been very important for the network. This has been also a milestone to our work for the last a uh, couple of months, I have to say, we had to do it. We have to give floor to the cities. We have to give space and to offer the platform for dialogue. So we organized 16 different webinars. And these points here uh, in front of you are the points that we have uh, some of the main out out outputs that we um, came up with after the webinars. Uh, of course, uh, this is about uh, protection of the most vulnerable population, uh, population who didn't have access to internet, so we have to deal something, we have to do something about that, and the cities have been very proactive. We have to, the cities have, have, have decided that in order to uh, rethink the uh, education in times of COVID-19, they have to link education with the other uh, dimension of the people's life, which is like health, food and employment. And of course, uh, we should not forget uh, the element of culture. We should not forget the cultural um, perspective, which is, can be very instrumental and it creates a lot of social links. And unfortunately, it has been um, um, not very much given attention during the pandemic crisis. Um, as next, as a, one of the key out, out, outputs of this webinar, of this work of UNESCO and together of, with the cities, of course, with the members, um, um, we came up with a need for a comprehensive planning at the national level um, with adult learning and education and lifelong learning as an integral part of this planning. And finally, the need for multi-sectoral collaboration and partnership within all the sectors in order to ensure inclusive access to lifelong learning. Thank you, Costantino Pagratis. Thank you. I don't have... Please. Have time more? I think this is my last slide. Please go on. Sorry for exceeding my time. Yeah, please, please um, continue. Thank you. Um, this is my last slide, as mentioned, and I would like to say that in uh, 20, in autumn 2021, uh, the fifth international conference will be organized, and um, the theme of the conference will be on global health, education, and emergency response. Now you see the relevance with the clusters I mentioned er earlier, and um, this work of the cluster will be presented during this international conference. We don't know who is going to organize the conference yet, um, which city, I mean, is going to organize yet, because the way UNESCO is working with the city is we um, <clears throat> uh, posting the call for applications for interesting cities to apply to host the conference. 
Uh, the host is currently uh, online and the deadline would be 15th of October 2020. Thank you, my, thank you for your attention and I'm looking very much forward to hear um, the contributions from the city from Israel, also the city from Australia and also the colleagues um, on this panel today. Well, thank you well, very much for the invitation. Uh, that's very interesting to hear. Thank you for your view and uh, your call to continue promoting education. Also this event is an opportunity to share different experiences. So now it's the time to introduce the Pascal Observatory and Joseph Convitz. Good morning. Joseph Convitz. Good morning. Pascal is the place in social capital and learning, a global alliance. Please, Joseph Convitz, can you explain why it's important as a city, as a region, be part of networking of learning cities and how to promote knowledge uh, sharing? Thank you very much. I'm sorry that I am not in Trieste because it's a beautiful city, which I discovered for the first time four years ago. But I also see colleagues, especially from Israel, where we were very pleased to help launch the Learning City Network in, in Israel uh, uh, a few years ago. Let me begin by saying something about Pascal, and that will make the connection between the local and the global clear. Pascal grew out of a four-year OECD project, which I co-directed at the end of the 1990s. We were then confronting the question, what is the connection between education and employment? We were looking at place-specific contexts, small regions, all in Europe, and places that were recovering from a major shock, the closure of factories, uh, the opening of borders, the unification of Germany, things that hit a place unexpectedly, unpredictably. And we learned two things from this. One was the critical importance of measurement of a baseline. And that meant that you couldn't look at one place in isolation from another. And therefore, we needed to build a database that was much bigger than the five case studies we were looking at. And we could only do it by building a database for entire countries. And that was the beginning of the regional database at the OECD. The other was the importance of peer-to-peer -peer learning by practitioners. Academics, yes, experts, yes, but also practitioners. The people who get something done in one place go to another place and explain to the people there what they did, how they did it, how they solved problems. And so this is the model which, to some extent, is embraced by uh, UNESCO. Uh, I could say with some pride that Pascal launched its program on learning cities in 2012, a year before uh, UNESCO did. In fact, we went to Hamburg for uh, the initial discussions uh, at UIL in 2012-2013. Uh, keeps the global dimension uh, vital is the context. Uh, the 1990s was the beginning of what we now know as the third age of globalization. And now we are dealing with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, with global climate change, with the future of globalization uh, after uh, COVID, and uh, with cross-border uh, questions, uh, two of which are very important in my mind. One is immigration and the other is aging. And they are linked because immigration is one way to cope with the problem of rapidly aging uh, populations. Now, with UIL, we provide uh, some support for individual cities through our network of experts, both academic and, and practitioners. Webinars, which have been uh, oversubscribed, uh, and the production of joint papers. So we are working very closely with UIL uh, through our own global network uh, in, in Pascal. Now, one specific feature of Pascal is that 
uh, it works through uh, links with universities that provide hubs or bases. Now, in the uh, development of a learning city, very often there are key institutions of higher education in the city and in the region. Uh, and what's so important is taking these uh, institutions of higher education uh, to connect them better to their local region. They are often more concerned about their connections with other institutions of higher education outside their region globally, because that's often how their success is measured. Uh, but they have much to offer and much to benefit from a closer relations with their own uh, with their own city and their own region. Now, uh, one of the challenges that we always face when trying to share good practices, uh, somebody will say, that's very good, but it won't work here. All the time we heard that at the OECD. That's very good, but it won't work here. And what they're missing is the problem solving process. We're not saying that because this solution worked in one city, it will work in another one. What we are saying is that there's a way by which you get to a solution that works. And that's a problem solving process. And that involves the local stakeholders, it involves the community, it involves many different things. And making that process work well will get you to the innovation that will work. Uh, I think we have a particular challenge now in learning from uh, the current pandemic. Uh, one which I, I see here in Europe uh, is the challenge of reaching the 25 to 40 year olds or the 20 to 40 year olds who don't seem to understand uh, very often what the question is of responsibility uh, both to themselves and to the oldest generation. Uh, we understand how young people often feel that they are invulnerable. This is a pandemic that's ruining their lives. Uh, but the more it goes on, uh, the more difficult will be a future uh, which will offer them good jobs and uh, a safe community. We're seeing thousands and thousands of people with highly specialized skills being turned out of their jobs mid-career uh, without necessarily an alternative path forward. Uh, highly trained professionals uh, or people who have a vocation for doing something. They really care about doing something uh, and their business is closed. Uh, they can't, they, they, they simply can't function. Uh, and I think we'll be, we'll be at risk of a, a so-called lost generation uh, of people who uh, will be drifting, who will become alienated, uh, who will uh, be angry, resentful uh, by being affected by something which uh, has hit them from outside, quite literally. Uh, and I think, I think that the learning city model uh, has to be uh, proactive in uh, preparing to deal with uh, what I consider to be a, a very big human uh, tragedy uh, that is about to, to uh, intensify as we go into the end of 2020 and into 2021. Uh, but I, I, if we didn't have the learning city model, we would have to invent it and we'd have to invent it rapidly, but we have it. And i uh, very grateful that uh, UIL has uh, sustained it to the point of 54 countries. Uh, the number of cities that you cited, uh, sounds very big, but it's actually a very, very tiny fraction of uh, all the cities in the world. Uh, we see this all the time when we deal with sustainable development and we say, oh my God, we've got all these big cities that are participating in a project on sustainable development. But think of all the cities that are not. 
Uh, and they're not just free riders, they're just hurting themselves. So uh, we have to think of ways of uh, using a mega microphone of, of expanding the value of this network to the people in the cities that are not yet participating, but need it very, very badly. So I think that uh, at that I will conclude and say thank you to the organizers. The technical support has been marvelous. Uh, and let's keep the discussion going. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joseph Convith. So, um, the international collaboration is, uh, is really important and necessary to face the global challenges well. And Pascal and UNESCO improved the practice of lifelong learning in the world cities by promoting the dialogue and peer learning among member cities and their university and their institute of higher education. Now, thanks to Alessia Rosolen, Regional uh, Counselor for Work, Training, Education, Research, University and Family. Thanks for being here with us. Good morning. And uh, it's, the, it's the time to talk about the case of Friuli Venezia Giulia. So what about the Learning Cities pilot project in Friuli Venezia Giulia? Thanks, Alessia Rosolen, please. Good morning, uh, let me uh, tell you something uh, uh, before I uh, start reading uh, my intervention in uh, English. Uh, I want uh, to thank uh, uh, Costantino Pagratis, first of all, uh, to have uh, informed uh, us about uh, the call uh, to host uh, in uh, 2021 uh, uh, the meeting of uh, Learning City. Uh, I think uh, it's a good opportunity for uh, this uh, town and uh, we will uh, think and work uh, to, to submit uh, our uh, re re request. Uh, I want only to tell uh, uh, to Mr. Um, um, uh, Convitz that uh, in 2021, if uh, we will uh, win uh, the call is uh, <laughs> benvenuto uh, in, uh, in this town. Um, I have to uh, read something, but uh, there is also uh, another thing I have uh, to do. Um, the reason uh, for which I decide to uh, submit this uh, way with uh, the region is uh, uh, that I think that uh, we have uh, to create uh, a, a system of duties, uh, not only the right for policy makers, uh, and that uh, I think that uh, uh, vulnerable population, uh, the importance of culture and uh, uh, inclusive access are uh, uh, the three points uh, of view that the policy have to uh, submit for to uh, choose everything, um, to choose everything. So let, then uh, I read and, uh, and so it will be easier for <laughs> everyone to, to come to understand what I have uh, said. Good morning, uh, everyone. The purpose of my speech uh, is uh, to describe uh, how the regional administration is creating the conditions so that in the near future, the entire regional territory can be configured as a learning community, comunità che apprende, adopting and implementing the principles of the learning cities. First, however, I would like to share with you some intermediate stages, and in particular, the pilot project Learning Cities in Friuli Venezia Giulia. The context of a pilot project is a partnership between the region and the state of Israel in the field of lifelong learning which was born and is developing thanks to a historic collaboration between the Liberetà University in Udine with Professor Pinaraso and the Modin Multidisciplinary Center with Orna Mager, 
which is a center of excellence for adult education and the incubator of the learning city model in Israel. Let me thank Pina and Orna for their work and let me thanks to M. Bibas, the major of Modin, president of the Union of Israeli Municipalities. The main uh, objective of the project is to create and propose to administrators and technical experts of the two countries structured opportunities for discussion and learning. Within this dialogue, there is the, there is the commitment on the part of all us to concretely experiment the learning city model in the municipality of Trieste. Furthermore, the regional administration and all the project's partners are committed to supporting the municipality of Trieste in all activities that will be necessary to obtain the recognition of learning city by UNESCO. Personally, I see this uh, pilot project as a part of a well-structured political design, which uh, this regional council is practically implementing and that places lifelong learning among the main intervention priorities with a broader and more transversal value than other regional, regional policies consistent with the principle established by UNESCO. I would also like to underline how the current world crisis linked to the spread of COVID has highlighted our ensuring continued training along the entire life of our citizens is no longer a choice, but a really obligation for us administrators. All families, as the first and the primary nucleus of a community, must be provided with suitable skills and competencies to be able to take full advantage of what technology offers and to improve the quality and autonomy of their lives. To do this, we must be increasingly able to intercept and envisage future changes in the scenario and to offer, through carefully planned and training, adequate responses to the needs of knowledge and skills required by the production system also by leveraging informal learning. I therefore believe that in the last year of the pilot project, together with our partners, we will be able to explore in depth both and at an institutional and operational level some very current issues which the COVID pandemic has brought to light, such as agile working and remote training and teaching having as a reference framework the objectives identified by Agenda 2030 for sustainable de development. I can say, I'm not uh, so able to read in English, <laughs> but, but I try. I can say that the pilot project has led to the creation of a small international community of administrators and technical figures who through dialogue and discussion are learning how to respond better and more effectively to the challenges faced by our territories and cities. Today we broaden and share these reflections with a wider audience which includes uh, other players of the Learning Cities Network and the Pascal Observatory. This is an example of uh, how communities, uh, through cultural partnership, the sharing of values, uh, respect, uh, and the enhancement of individual differences and the creative dialogue, can make uh, the individual an active protagonist and improve the work of institution as a whole. In practical terms, what are the interventions that the regional administration and in particular my department, the Department of Work, Training, Education, Research, University and Family, which I have the honor of directing, are carrying out the objective at the regional level is to make lifelong learning an important resource for citizens for citizens, but most importantly for the community in which they live. Because without educated and trained citizens, there is no development, innovation, and economic progress as a city, a region, and a country. 
The short time I have available does not allow me to focus on the many initiatives carried out or planned. So I have chosen uh, to highlight uh, three intervention, interventions that I consider key points of our action. The first concerns the decision to join the Pascal Observatory because we believe that the path undertaken requires moments of discussion and examination. The observatory can be a qualified space for meeting and exchanging experiences with other regional managers and competent international scholars. I want to give you a snapshot of this small region, 1,200,000 inhabitants, but uh, which in terms uh, of uh, education level, levels uh, is at the top of the nation and meets uh, almost uh, all European parameters. The school dropout rate in the region fluctuates between 8 and 9%, and this value is below the 10% threshold set for the 2020 at the European level. 86% of the population aged 20, 24 have at least a secondary school diploma. Finally, the percentage of those in possession of a third le level high, higher education qualification in the 30-34 age group is also progressively increasing every year and in 2019 was 33%. Uh, Starting from this reality from the experiences gained also at the interna international level and with the firm desire to improve the well-being of our citizens in general and in particular the quality of their training opportunities. Last July, the Regional Council approved a three-year planning document concerning training and lifelong guidance activities. We have uh, deliberately choose, chosen to envisage a joint plan for training and guidance. The synergy and the integration between uh, these two types of interventions can truly create the conditions to achieve our, our goal which is to strengthen the opportunities for increasing the knowledge, skills, and abilities of the active and inactive population, according to a lifelong learning logic for the creation of a learning community, learning region, in a society exposed to exponential change, taking into account both the current needs of professionalism of the regional production and social fabric and those that will probably emerge in the near future, future even if only merely perceivable at the moment. In the document, we have also identified, um, in the document, we have also identif identified three specific intervention priorities through which we want to strengthen the citizen, citizens' abilities to select the best study and training opportunities according to their inclinations and aspiration. Strengthen the role and added value of training in the development of the driving sectors of Friuli Venezia Giulia's economy. Expand the opportunities for quality work placement and the social inclu inclusion for those people who are at greater risk of social and labor market exclusion. The concrete interventions are numerous and are already partially defined in the three-year program. Many of these will find financial support in the resources of the European Social Fund. Well, I'm finishing. <laughs> the definition of the new regional uh, operating program of the United Europe for the seven-year pe period, which I remind you is a part of the strategic objective and more social Europe, it pre is precisely the third intervention in the third in, uh, intervention. Um, and uh, uh, allow me uh, to end of my speech uh, 
for, to express my personal thanks to all participants in this seminar, and in particular uh, to uh, the partners of the Learning Cities in uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia pilot project uh, for the region, uh, the research service uh, at the international relations. Uh, the municipality of Trieste with uh, Serena Tonell, the Liberetta University of Friuli Venezia Giulia in Udine con Pinaraso, and uh, for Israel, the Union of Israeli Municipation, uh, Mr. Ayn Bibas, and uh, the municipality of Modin, represented by multiple, multidisciplinary center with uh, Orna Mager. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alessia Rosolen, for your speech and for the snapshot of the region. And now it's, uh, it's the time to know the Israeli model of learning cities. Uh, welcome and thanks to Haim Bibas, Mayor of Modin and President of the Union of Israeli Municipality. Well, uh, what about your experience and what about the result and the new steps of your project? Please. Thank you very much and uh, thank you, of course, for uh, this uh, invitation to the wonderful uh, conference. Uh, I was intended uh, to be in uh, Trieste in this wonderful conference, but we uh, do it uh, through, uh, uh, of course, the Zoom. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, we can see each other uh, as uh, soon as uh, possible. It is uh, exciting to participate in this uh, important uh, conference, even if it is uh, only uh, remotely. And as for uh, learning cities, network is vital to the education of our children, the next generation, and even more so since so many of us have moved to remote and uh, uh, distance uh, learning. First, uh, I would like to, thanks, uh, to thank Mr. Federighe, Friuli Venezia Giulia President, for your uh, virtual hospitality. I look uh, forward to participating uh, next time in uh, person in Italy. Or can you uh, come uh, to Modin to join my uh, city? Professor uh, Konevic uh, of the Pascal Global Network, thank you very much. We are honored uh, to be member of the network and uh, promote this uh, uh, initiative. We are uh, also pleased to have uh, the opportunity to expand the friendship and cooperation with our dear friends. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Alicia Roselen, Counselor for Work, Training, Education and Family of uh, the Friuli Venezia Giulia region. Mrs. Uh, Pinarasso, President of uh, the International Adult Education Center, Université de Liberté. This is uh, Katie Sigati, Vice Director of the uh, Central D Directorate for Work, Training, Education, and Family of the Friuli Venezia Giulia Autonomous Region. This is uh, Serena Tonel, Counselor for uh, Economic Activities and the uh, S of 2020 Municipality of uh, Trieste, of course and uh, our friends in uh, the UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning Global Network and the heads of uh, uh, the, the organization. Thank you everyone for uh, uh, joining us. I'm proud that uh, my city, Modin Maccabim Road, has joined the learning city networks of uh, UNESCO and Pascal. The DNA that uh, promoted the, the city to become a learning city is based on core values that are uh, uh, practiced uh, through active uh, uh, citizenship, volunteering, and thirst for lifelong learning and, uh, of course, innovation. The city of Modin uh, serves as uh, an incubator for uh, uh, and up for uh, developing learning city models for uh, the learning city network, which is expanding in Israel and is maintained with the support of uh, the Federation of Local Authorities in Israel, which I'm uh, the chairman of uh, uh, this federation. The world has uh, changed uh, quite dramatically since uh, the last time we, we all met. It's uh, an unprecedented change and we have all had to adjust 
uh, on the fly. There is no uh, user manual here. With every change uh, and the crisis like uh, uh, coronavirus, there is also real uh, opportunity. We are all experiencing now this now. As mayor and uh, those that uh, represent uh, the mills in our countries, we are the ones of, uh, uh, on the front lines. Our government make a decision and a declaration, but we are the ones implementing in all the cities, small town, mid town, and the large town. We are uh, the ones fa facing the citizens. Since uh, the outbreak of coronavirus, municipalities have never been more important. Success and failures is uh, in our hands. As a result, saving life is also in our hands. We always uh, knew education was uh, important, but now we see just uh, how vital it is and that uh, uh, it is more than just knowledge. It is uh, routine and stability also. We were uh, a challenge to continue and keep our education system running. Two uh, million students in Israel needed routine and education, and we provided it. As mayor uh, of Bodin Makamim Raoult, I was uh, on the ground and understood the situation and how we needed to adjust. I was meeting, I, I, I was meeting with, the, with parents, with teacher, with principal, and on the national level with, the, with our uh, education ministry and other uh, minister in uh, the government of Israel. Education is one of our main local pillars as a young city, raising the next generation to be well equipped as grown up individual and face complex life challenges ahead successfully, of course. Many municipal resources are invested in various framework, utilizing and training a wide variety of uh, professionals in order to promote high level of uh, achievement, providing le learning opportunities within formal and non-formal frameworks, enhancing lifelong learning beginning from a young age and continuing all through life, striving for continuous development and personal growth. As uh, chairman of the Federation of uh, Local Authorities uh, in Israel, I implemented the same policies and the principles throughout the entire country in our 257 municipalities in Israel. This was uh, challenging, but easier than uh, dealing with, uh, with government. Mayor uh, get it, local municipalities get it. We are uh, uh, dealing uh, with the resident on a day-to-day -day basis. We look at them uh, in the highs and the provide the services like education, healthcare, transportation, and uh, more. Where is the uh, uh, politicians on the national level look uh, to build their uh, base and serve their uh, uh, constituents? Mirrors are serving all of the, uh, of the residents. So all of the 257 municipalities worked together to help their uh, residents. We put uh, uh, politics aside and got uh, uh, to walk. Mayors know how to walk together. We know our resident, we know how uh, uh, to bring them all the services and we uh, can do it uh, uh, better more than uh, any uh, national politics. So th thank you, I'm Baibas. Uh, without education, there is no development, innovation, social and economic progress. I know that uh, I'm Baibas is joined by manager of the municipality, Orna Mager, founder of the project Learning City in Israel, municipality of Modin. Please, Orna Mager. Yeah, could you explain which kind of activities did you plan and the effect uh, in the community? Uh, sorry, but I think uh, Mr. Chaim Bibas uh, didn't end his presentation. Chaim? Well, well, well yeah. please, but we have to go on. 
please, could you explain your, uh, your activity? All right, the Learning City model serves as a positive uh, framework okay. to enable uh, empowerment uh, citizens, as well as encouraging the municipality together with the support from uh, government offices to provide the essential services needed and to develop learning opportunities uh, necessary to strengthen uh, uh, individuals' capabilities, leading to uh, a strong and uh, inclusive community locally and, of course, uh, globally. This is why I'm proud that the Modin Makabimrut has uh, joined to the Learning City Network of uh, UNESCO and Pascal. Uh, empowering uh, citizens through the Learning City is one of the main goals of this effort, and I'm glad we are all implementing, uh, improving uh, uh, in this area. Smart City, uh, uh, through technology and innovation, are uh, replacing the old models. And uh, we uh, collaborate with, the, with, of course, with the government, with all the cities, try to promote uh, the services to our residents uh, through the innovation, because I do believe if we can uh, give them a new technology, we can uh, uh, improve the services to our resident and we can uh, 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 change and make it uh, easy to all uh, resident in uh, uh, our cities, in uh, all the cities in Israel, of course, with the participation and the uh, uh, collaboration with the, with the uh, uh, organization in, in Italy and other states uh, uh, in the world. Uh, now, more than ever, we, we realize that uh, uh, we have uh, more that uh, unites and uh, then divides us. We have more in common than we ever realized, and we, uh, uh, and, we, and we have to collaborate and share experiences and work together. We can face uh, the challenges ahead and we, uh, uh, with, with the greatest chance uh, uh, of success. So uh, let's continue to work together in our cities and in our countries. And I would like to thank uh, the president and to all people in Italy. We would like to continue together this wonderful uh, uh, Learning City project. And I do believe after uh, uh, the period of coronavirus, we can uh, uh, learn a lot of how we can uh, participate through the new technology and innovation between the cities and try to share a common things together. Thank you very much. Thank you. So collaboration is the key factor for, for the future. So please, Orna Magar, could you explain the positive effect, effect of your activities very shortly, please? Yes, I will try to make it shortly, but I want to start um, uh, with um, at the beginning of uh, the 19th. Uh, the most dramatic earth earthquake hit the biggest city, one of the biggest city, and causes a great damage, especially because they couldn't fight against the fire that blew everything, including all the water pipes. And the city was completely destroyed. Today, this importance for this crisis comes more from the wealth of the scientific knowledge derived from this crisis. The solution that defined of building high reserves for the supplying the water and the extraordinary rehabilitation of the city. This city is San Francisco, and her story is one of many other uh, that demonstration the power of the city. That also my mayor mentioned the ability of the city to recover, to readjusting, to readapting to the new reality by learning and exploring new answers for any kind of crisis. So this story shows that what we are taking for granted today can be changed dramatically tomorrow, and we need to be pre prepared to readapt and to upgrade the capacity building of our city, municipality, communities, to answering all these kinds of crises and challenges. And this is what the city, lear the city learning is about. I would like to show with you a few practical insights about how to lead this change based on our local experience. What I will be touching upon in the mind is the mindset that we want to instill, creating a value system that can support the change. And first and foremost, we need to prioritize values and define objectives. 
The change has to occur in two ways. First, the top down. We want to have the policymakers and the key stakeholders, like you heard my mayor come and join, facilitate the change. But what we forget at times is that also has to bind them to that change because it answers immediate needs. The second part to come into the play is the bottom up. Bottom up means that the municipality itself assumes responsibility for the change and drives it forward alongside the resident. The model that we have developed in Israel is based on the fact that many communities and cities, their needs, their ambitions are very complicated and very different. This is why we established a platform for learning cities network, taking care to include local authorities from our various sector that represent the diversity of the Israeli society, like uh, Jewish, Christian, Druze, Muslims, Bedouin, and so on. For this, we indicate common language, a set of common criteria that allowing us to define, discuss, and reflect what learning communities and cities are really about. This way, the, uh, the, this criteria should never link to a specific content or topic, but rather to how the community functions, how they operates and collaborates, or in short, the criteria should be linked to the learning capacity building of each city and each citizens. The other cities can be rich or poor and can have many or few resources. It can be metropolitan or a village. It doesn't matter because the point is how are the existing resources used in the city? How do the organizations collaborate? And how are the citizen needs met at a given resources level? We developed also the guideline that including monitoring and evaluating process that based on the Beijing criteria of UNESCO, because a learning city must evaluate it in relative and not in absolute terms. It means that we evaluating the community performance against potential resources that are available. And once you have a good answer for this, you will find that there is a very variety of ways that uh, we can create this win-win situation that will infuse you with the resources and with the commitment of various people that you need to make it happen. Let's have a very short example for our center addressing the change for the labor market and offering a practical model answering the challenge of the employability that concerns us all. We all feel that we are in an unexpected global experiment of the changing marketplace of working from home, of flexible work for process, focusing on results, decreasing and reducing unnecessary resources and systems, and emphasizing especially human resources on the basis of soft skills. We developed in Mudein a local pilot project which started as a joint venture with many actors from the municipality, stakeholders, business sectors, NGOs, unemployed, and the employers themselves. And it's aimed mainly for people age 40 plus who have difficulty to integrate back at the workplace because of the problem of ageism. We set the framework and work plan for the municipality that has the main role, as Biba said, of integrator and incorporates the needs of the cities and in one hand, with the interest of the employees and the key actors. This program, based on our model for perspective transformation and critical reflection, and the starting point relate to the unemployee himself as the subject of the change rather than the object of the change. This is the process that for people that need to directing their life change dealing with their situation and going to mentality change and we offer them this framework to do that. In 10 minutes presentation, I can, show, I can shortly note that when city take responsibility on the individual's employable capacities, holistic approach is needed, taking into account the side effect of this crisis, for example, on the family life, on the community resilience, on the city incomes.
and the better opportunities we can offer to the individual, the better opportunities we can get for the growth of our communities and cities. COVID-19 gave a huge boost to these kind of initiatives and most important to the necessity of the partnerships. Partnerships of the all key stakeholders and policymakers and the commitment towards this project for employability. I'm happy to say that recently, just recently, our government ministry of labor has decided to promote this project as a national pilot and assimilate it in our city of Modi'in as an incubator in order to develop further and incorporate into the Israeli learning city network. The meaning from that is the understanding of the policy makers that most effective channel to get their, to getting their goals, like economies growth or as well as a, a political or electoral uh, power, is passing through the direct channel of the learning city platform that connecting directly to the citizens and this model can be succeeded through the joint cooperation with all of them. When I, when I talk about partnership, I want really and strongly recommending on enlarging the collaboration internationally as well. The cooperation from the Uli and Metsu Julia, for, exa for example, the mutual visits that we shared and study seminar, enable us both exploring variety, variety in new ways and inspiring each other from best practices. We're using the great support also and the contribution from the global network of UNESCO and Pascal as well, and it's really a great co contribution and support. We will be very happy to invite you for exploring together the top guidelines that we shared and the best uh, practices. And uh, I know that some of you visit Modin in Israel and mentioned how remarkable is it that we can bring abroad and get you to the meeting with the top ministries in Israeli government almost by the click of the fingers? It's not because we are unique. It's not because we hold an, any enormous powers or connection. No. It's derived from the fact that we are constantly concentrated not only what we are trying to achieve with the learning cities, but rather how to answer the interest and immediate needs those policy makers of those policy makers as well as ours, the citizen and the municipalities alike. Because remember, we cannot until we cannot wait until somebody endowed us with the ability and resources to make the change. We know it by now, by now that we need to answer our immediate needs as well as the future goals. You will see that people line up to share and come on board with your initiatives, becoming your partners in heart, spirit, and action. And if I mention heart, spirit, and action, I really want from the bottom of my heart to end with our deep gratitude and deep appreciation to the great partnership and friendship for our, with our partners from Friuli Venezia Giulia, from Udine, and thanks so much the colleagues from Australia, from UNESCO, and from Pascal. Thank you and hope to see you soon again. Thank you, thank you very much, Ayn Bibas and Orna Mager for explaining us the Israeli project and underlining the importance of cooperation and collaboration. And now let's move to Australia uh, and let's meet Jack Torres Gomez. Good morning. Jack Torres Good Gomez morning. is a um, learning community okay. officer of the learning community on Windham. So uh, it's the time to know another best practice of learning city in the world. So what about your experience? Bonjour, no. Uh, good evening from Melbourne, Australia. Um, first of all, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians and leaders past, present and emerging and the rich learning that has taken place for thousands of years on the lands where Wyndham stands. 
Uh, the picture that you can see on the slide is the Werribee River, which runs uh, through our beautiful area. I wanted to share a small piece of Australia with you tonight. So thank you to the organisers for this session and to ease off uh, more broadly for inviting me to share the Wyndham Learning City journey. So where in the world is Wyndham? So Wyndham is located in southeastern Australia in the state of Victoria. Our boundaries cover areas of urban, rural and coastal development. The population is over 270,000 in Wyndham and it's one of the fastest growing local government areas in Australia. Uh, Wyndham Council is a major employer of the area as well as agriculture, construction, education and healthcare industries. Our learning city model focuses on four key areas. So we're focused on celebrating living and learning in Wyndham, advocating for equality and quality and service provision, facilitating partnerships and collaboration across sectors, innovating learning and fostering new entrepreneurial spirit. And we became a member of the UNESCO Network of Learning Cities in 2019, so we're very new. Um, and our strategy includes an action plan with 18 different key actions. It is a collaboration with many different key stakeholders at, because we know that council cannot and should not do it all on their own. Also, our model has been designed so that our team sits within the libraries so that we're helping embed lifelong learning into our public library system as well. And we also have a very strong evaluation model and one particular tool we use to measure the strength of our partnerships is called the Collective Impact Assessment Tool, known as SIAT. So you can see here our learning city model, while we have those four areas um, that I've just mentioned, they work all together and there's a lot of crossover. We celebrate learning while we're advocating for change we innovate while we're working on our partnerships. They intersect and they affect and affect each other. So uh, our first one, celebrating living and learning in Wyndham, I just wanna show a short video to show our learning festival. We have some technical problem. Could, could you show the video, please? Could you? Uh, okay. Um, I'll, just a second, I'll just go back to my presentation. That's fine. Ah, no. Oh, that's okay. I can skip the video. Okay. And I can share it afterwards. Okay. Uh, you can see my PowerPoint again. You have to share with us your screen with your slide presentation. Fine. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'll share. Uh, don't a, worry. Um, I'll share a link to the video after um, this presentation so you can see that in your own time. So our Wyndham Learning Festival, um, it's usually held from the 1st until the 8th of September, but this year we've postponed it um, until the 23rd until the 30th of November. 
and we're moving it to be a fully virtual event. And um, we've decided not to have a printed program this year in response to the distancing restrictions that are facing us in Wyndham. Um, also linked to celebrating living and learning in Wyndham, we um, run different events. So we ran a transformative education showcase, which was led by the Wyndham Community Education Centre with support from our council team. Uh, ran for three hours, it was fully virtual, um, and it was all about um, blurring the transitions, uh, blurring the edges of learning transitions to make um, transitions open and equitable for all. And we broke into um, small group sessions and we were dealing with some of Wyndham's uh, wicked uh, learning transition problem. So it was very powerful. The second area that we focus on in our learning strategy is around uh, advocating for e equality and quality and service provision. So with our growing um, population, we have a really strong focus on campaigning for education and learning services and support. Uh, we have strong evidence that backs advocacy and also a very strong willingness to work with state and national governments to ensure that Wyndham residents can access the learning resources that they need. Um, two oh, yeah. major campaigns that we've been supporting, one is around schools for Wyndham, which is around uh, requesting the state and federal government to add more schools to our area. We have many young people growing up in Wyndham and we need more schools. And then the second advocacy campaign we have is called the I Love Kinder campaign. Um, and you can look both of these advocacy campaigns up online. Um, we're also advocating for equity in learning institutions in Wyndham for people with disability aged 12 to 25. And we have a whole dedicated project team working on ensuring learning is accessible for everybody, regardless of your abilities. Our next uh, focus area around facilitating partnerships and collaborations across sectors. Some um, people who are here attending this session may have heard a little bit about the Global Learning Festival that we recently completed last week and many um, of our friends here um, ran events as a part of that festival, which was wonderful. Um, as a part of this particular partnerships focus, we know that we can't do this work alone. So our partnerships are really broad and diverse. Uh, we work internally with our libraries team and various teams across Wyndham. We also have really strong partnerships with principals of schools, learning organisations, our local higher education institutions and our amazing tech school. Uh, our most recent project was this online uh, global learning festival, which was co-led um, with the neighbouring council, Melton Council. And so already being able to break down the barriers of competition as two learning cities and rather collaborating and working together to co-lead that project. Uh, it included a targeted partnership with over 20 other learning cities across the globe, as well as over 80, 80 other partners to deliver 110 learning events across four days. And the aim of this ambitious project was to give people hope in these times of uncertainty, particularly because a lot of our learning city friends across the globe run learning festivals themselves that have been cancelled or postponed this year. So this was our way to give back um, a little bit to the community um, globally and to get them involved to run some events. The fourth area is around innovating learning. So our commitment to innovating learning occurs locally, nationally and internationally to run um, events like our virtual learning community forum that we ran in June, our global learning festival that I just mentioned. Um, also, you can see here our wind talk, which is based loosely on the TED talk model. Um, and this theme was around don't just rebuild, reimagine. So supporting our communities to see hope and to see this time as a chance to redesign our cities and learning and actually get excited about impacting on change um, because of the pandemic rather than as a result of it. Um, and then we also, innovating learning, we also um, have broader policy innovation, including working with the UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning, as well as the Pascal Observatory, providing input into um, policy 
um, and helping, um, you know, set the scene for what lifelong learning policy and programming is going to look uh, in the future. So just finally to wrap up, our, um, the, uh, that my details are there on the screen and we would love to chat to you more about our work um, and to connect to cook up some projects together um, to support lifelong learning. So if you're interested in pursuing a similar model uh, in your own learning city, please get in contact uh, and uh, let us know. We'd love to um, have a partnership, make friends and connect in this way because that's what this work's all about. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jack Torres Gomez, a really interesting point of view. And thank you for explaining how you manage education, technolo technology, innovation, and growth of citizen skills. And now let's conclude with the councillor of the municipality of Trieste for economic activities, theater, and ESOF 2020, Serena Tonel, please, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, good morning, everyone, and in particular to the speaker uh, of today and uh, our friends from uh, Israel and uh, Australia. Before starting, sorry, it's better. Yeah. Before, starting, <laughs> before starting my speech, I would like to thank the Friuli Venezia Giulia region, and in particular, uh, its president, Massimiliano Federica, and the consular. Uh, Alessia Rosalen for the opportunity they offered to this um, municipality of Trieste to participate in the Learning City pilot project in Friuli Venezia Giulia. The content of the project has been described by my colleague uh, Rosalen. However, for the municipality of Trieste, I can say that through the project, we go to know the model of the Learning City and above all, during our visit to Israel, to witness its practical implementation firsthand. The municipality of Trieste, which, have, uh, which I have the honor of representing uh, here, fully shared the aims of the project and strongly believing that the long life learning is a fundamental condition for the progress, innovation, civic participation, and economic development of city. I guess not all participants know Trieste, Therefore, first of all, I would like to provide you with some data, a sort of a snapshot of this splendid city, which has accepted the commitment and honor to hosting such as an important event as is of 2020, despite this difficult situation, which none of us could have imagined just a few months ago. Trieste is a medium-sized city with a population of uh, just over uh, 200,000 inhabitants with a fairly high average age uh, of uh, 48. We have uh, uh, 205 point, um, point uh, senior for every uh, 100 uh, young people. Regarding the level of education in Trieste, 71.6% uh, of our citizens aged between uh, 25 and 64 have at least a high school diploma, compared to a national average of only 62.1%. In, in 2019, in the ranking of the quality of life in Italian cities, formulated by the newspaper Sole 24 Ore, Trieste stood in the fifth place, gaining a position from the previous year. So it's an educated city where citizens live well and that between the um, mid-high teens and early 20th centuries, experienced an area of extraordinary economic development thanks to the fact uh, that it was the main port of Austro-Hungarian empires. In history, has allowed uh, its history, sorry, uh, has allowed Trieste to be in the past a meeting place of culture, religion, and, pe and peoples, and to become in the present time a city of science, which hosts a scientific and university community renowned abroad and attracting thousands of students every year from all over the world and from all cultures. This was possible thanks to the present and of important scientific institutions, such as the, um, the electrosynchrotron light machine, the 
Area Science Park, the International School of Advanced Study, the Astronomical Observatory of Trieste, and the International Center for Theoretical Physics. In this context, what are the objectives that uh, the municipal administration has for the near future to further improve the quality of life of, of its citizens? Can Trieste become a learning city? I'm obliged to mention that our starting situation is the presence of structures and experiences that are already at good level. Among these, I cannot fail to mention the recreation centers, centers, educational structures born in 1998 as a municipal initiative with the aim of offering public context and a non-religion organization to keep children from less affluent families up the street. Currently, there are uh, 13 centers, okay, 13, yeah, located in the various districts of the city which offer a quality educational and a recreational public service to guaranteeing quality free time for the children and young people of the city. With the time? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> this uh, educational offer goes hand in hand with the presence of the centers for citizens with disabilities in which these less fortunate fellow citizens can find opportunities to develop their creativity and sociability. Also, the cultural offer of the city is very large and diverse, often linked to the world of science. Interesting is, for example, the case of Imaginario Scientifico, an educational museum with, on a, um, with an interactive and experimental approach dedicated to teaching science to children, starting from three years of age. The methods uh, of carrying out the workshop are quite original, and I'm referring in particular to the night as science, science, scientist spending Saturday night at the museum, or the possibility to organize birthday party uh, or for children and teenagers, assisted by the museum's scientific guides and entertained with experiments and demonstration in chemistry, physics, and astronomy. Then, there are numerous shows and events that take place during the year, including some at, at, uh, at international level. At regard innovation and business support, support, the presence at the International Center for Theoretical Physics, ICTP, of a Fab Lab represents for entrepreneurs and professionals an interesting opportunity to develop their products and to advance the technologies related to their production through the use of smart and green systems. This business support is further strengthened by the creation of a of the Urban Center Enterprise, which is uh, being completed in some facilities to the old port. The structure we host, free of chairs, about 15 new and young companies in the biohigh tech sector, but, is, uh, um, but, it, but it is primarily designed as an open place for continuous contamination and exchange between the city, the company which will uh, settle there, settled there, and the research sector. Personally, I am optimistic and convinced that Trieste can become a learning city in addition to already being a city of science. On the part of municipal uh, administration of Trieste, there is the intention to consolidate the role of city of science as also demonstrated by the uh, organizational organizational and economic effort made for the implementation of ISOF 2020. But our commitment uh, as administrators goes further and looks with great attention to the objectives identified by Agenda 2030 for sustainable development. In particular, I can guarantee that the priorities of the Municipal Council include the objective Quality, edu quality education and creation of sustainable cities and communities. Because we want to guarantee learning opportunities for all our citizens and, and at the same time allow Trieste to continue to thrive, to, th to thrive and grow, improving the use of resources and reducing pollution and poverty. 
To achieve this result concretely and operationally, we have included numerous interventions in our agenda. First of all, at July, last July, we submitted the request for the Learning City recognition because we are convinced that the Learning City Network offers Trieste an, uh, an unparalleled opportunity for interchair and the possibility of mutual learning through the sharing of innovation, innovative practice. We also want to work to strengthen the local networks, building and sharing projects with all the institutions that deal with learning in the city. In, in this regard, we are evaluating the opportunity of setting up a local committee to improve the integration and coordination of all activities related to lifelong learning carried out in uh, Trieste. Increasing the number and quality of the event in the city, also at the international level, represents a further course of action to offer all our citizens the possibility of personal and cultural growth and to support the tourist offer of Trieste, which in uh, recent years has been uh, steadily growing. Particular attention will also be given to formal and informal educational services aimed to our fellow citizens with disabilities, because quality education is achieved by guaranteeing equal access to all levels of vocational education and training, including for all, for all to those in vulnerable situation. I can, uh, I can run more. <laughs> so, um, this is a deeply um, structured program with uh, certainly required both uh, quantitative and qualitative monitoring and closing examination of past experience. In this sense, we are confident that we can count on the experience and skills of the Pascal Observatory. In conclusion, I uh, would like to thank all those of, uh, who participa uh, participated in this event. Our region, Friuli Venezia Giulia, the Israeli partners, um, IMB Bas and uh, Ornamager, the Australia City of Wyndham, UNESCO, and the Pascal Network. I convinced that participation uh, in uh, this uh, project set the basis for working in synergy to achieve the objecting, object objectives sorry, of establishing the social model of UNESCO's learning city. The rapidly evolving world leads us to continuously uh, redefine social, economic, and political norms, promoting lifelong learning from basic school to um, university studies, and putting the concept of family back at the center of the community. The shared goal is, create, is to create learning communities that go beyond geographical boundaries and local dimension to embrace and unite the local, regional and international level. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Serena Tonel, for your snapshot of the town. So we can say, we can conclude that ESOF 2020 and the scientific international community with the scientific centers and university and the museum and so on is the proof that Trieste could become a learning city because Trieste is at the top of science education, science research and science communication. So uh, our time is over. I'd like to thank to all today's speaker and the audience and the organizer of ESOF 2020. Thank you once again. Bye-bye and enjoy the last day of ESOF 2020. Thank you.